this morning we acknowledge our presence on the ancestral land of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee people and commit to caring for the land that sustains us. Christ invites us all to this holy feast. As we gather this morning, we remember our sisters and brothers from above and below the equator, from the north and from down under, from every time zone around the world. As today's sunlight inches across land and sea, Christians gather to celebrate their place in God's family. All are invited and all are welcome. If you are joining us online this morning, we invite you to prepare your elements and have them ready to join us when we come to our Lord's table later in the service. Welcome to all of you here this morning. There is a Lord be with you. Around the world today, people gather around the Lord's table. We gather with them in part of the room. Around the world, the broken body is made whole. As a part of that body, we join in the human Around the world, the banquet of God is prepared for the table. We who share the banquet have eagerly to be fed. Let us worship together. Let us share God's bounty. Today is Worldwide Communion Sunday. We come to our Lord's table. We are one as we come. Portal two in the red and book or the words are almost Transforming hearts and situations, 
Communion is when we partake of the elements of bread and wine that remind us of what Christ did. Jesus died on the cross, buried, and on Easter Sunday, Easter, the first Easter, what happened? He rose from the grave. That's right. Giving us life with him always. And so today is one of those days where we really stop and remember what Christ did. So we come to the table remembering what Christ did for all of us. And in this way, we do not forget. We do not forget ever what he has done for us. So we don't need post-it notes. We have our Lord's table and the elements and the participation that we, we, we do to remember what Christ has done for us. And we give thanks for that because it makes a big difference in our lives, knowing that he is with us always, 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 always in the spirit. And we can turn to him at any time and talk to him. And he loves us. Can you remember anything better than that? Let's join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Who do we pray for? We praise you, God. But who do we pray for? Why don't we pray for Jesus' name? But we pray for each other. And if we're going through something we need help with, we pray for ourselves. We pray for our neighbors. We pray for lots of things. We ask God for help. This song is called, Lord, Listen to Your Children Pray. So we're going to sing this to you probably a couple of times, Lord. Okay? All right? Of 
cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Our second reading is Matthew 26, verses 26 to 28. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of all sins. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, send your spirit of wisdom that we may hear your words speaking from the scriptures and speaking throughout this time of worship. May we hear with ears and understand and hearts that respond in love. May these thoughts and words speak the truth. In Christ we pray. Amen. Well, we sometimes, you know, when we think about the early church, Paul's writings, and some of the things that he was sharing with us, maybe, maybe our minds want to think that the, the early church was a, a gathering of sort of flawless saints who had it all together. Well, Paul's letter to the Philippians that we just heard a little of suggests that that's not quite the case. The Philippian church was the first church to be planted in Europe, but it wasn't without its struggles. Philippi's church wasted energy and useless struggles around unity, but God continued to to use the church, and it was one of the one of the things that it did was send converts to to help Paul. In the New Testament, the Philippian church was also used as a model for other churches to follow. So, how does Paul address the need for further unity? And throughout this, this letter, Paul challenges the Philippians to, to think about everything under Jesus' sovereign guidance. To look to him, you know, when you're in a, in a struggle. Look to him for guidance. You know, raise your eyes up out of, the, out of the situation. Look to him. Paul calls the Philippian church to stand firm in one spirit and work side by side spread the gospel. Paul also tries to shift the Philippians away from focusing on their disagreements and instead sharpen their focus on the grace God has shown. In just the first four verses of today's epistle reading, Paul makes four statements, all beginning with the word if. If these four things are in fact true for the Philippians, he yeah, adds, then they have a solid foundation for unity. He writes, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common, if any tenderness and compassion, any common sharing in the spirit, then make my joy complete by being made like-minded, having the same love, being with one in spirit and one in mind. If the Philippines Christians have experienced these four truths, the Apostle adds, they must now focus on this foundation. Well, today, the word if generally means a sort of level of, of uncertainty or outright untruth. You and I say things like, well, if the Maple Leafs win the Stanley Cup this year, 
That's a big if. It's <laughs> a big if. What are the chances, right? However, the New Testament Greek often uses the word if in a different way. Paul's generation would say something like, if I am your friend, which I am, they use this truth as a, as a basis for, for making a request, teaching something, or giving a command. So Paul is really saying, since you have the courage from being united with Christ, be like one. Since you have fellowship with the Spirit, have the same love. Since you have comfort from his love and tenderness and compassion, be of one spirit and purpose. In other words, the powerful realities of God's grace form the basis for Paul's plea for Philipp Philippian unity. Philippian unity. The Christ who was Lord of the Philippian church is also Lord of our church today. Today, churches have sometimes widely varying beliefs about many different subjects or the same subject. That's one of the things that makes Christ Church the, the dynamic living organism that it is. And the wide varying beliefs can also make the pursuit of church unity a huge challenge. Paul challenges us to focus more on Christ's encouragement more than on our complaints or differences against each other. What do we have? However, this requires a kind of putting others in line before ourselves. It requires looking beyond our own needs and interests to the needs and interests of the Christians with whom God surrounds us. Not a, not a natural process for us, but thankfully, God has graciously given us the perfect example of how to do this in Christ. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. He made himself he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. He humbled himself and became obedient to death. In view of everything that God has done, Paul calls Christians to strongly pursue our Christian calling. Yes, in this world today there are many divisions around us and divisions in us, our personalities, divisions in our families, in society, you know, it, it, all congregations and denominations, divisions, all significant, but what do we have in common? People of various races are increasingly feeling alienated from each other, and we live in a society that is increasingly more social, socially, economically divided. We let our differences of opinion about things like climate change, racial re reconciliation, baptism, Christ's return in our denominations, to erect barriers that we seldom find ways to breach. And even if we must continue must sometimes agree and disagree on things, we focus on what unites us, what brings us together. It's the sacrificial work of Jesus Christ. At a church where a man served as an associate pastor, he writes a story about communion. He said communion was usually served by intention, and the bread was left on the table of Front after worship, so intention is where you come up and you take the bread and you take the wine and then you return to your seat. It's not served to you, you come and receive. Well, the children discovered the bread was used for communion after Sunday school and they discovered it was very young. And so while the parents gathered in the fellowship hall after church, the kids ran back upstairs to enjoy the leftover communion bread. A few of the adults got upset seeing the children grabbing pieces of the sanctified bread and shoving it into their mouths, not to mention the crumbs, the crumbs of the floor, or the occasional arguments that who got hold of But parents didn't want to tell their children they couldn't have the communion bread. Somebody came up with a great idea. 
and after ceremoniously carrying the communion bread from the sanctuary at the end of worship, it was taken to the fellowship hall for coffee. So it fed us in communion, and it fed us in community. It was a great solution because it satisfied everyone, which is rare. Which is rare. But either way, he writes, I don't think Jesus minded. I don't think God is bothered by children wanting to eat that which was good. And it brought to mind back in university when we would have our weekly worship service in the chapel and we would have communion. And especially the students who lived on campus often gathered around the communion table afterwards to enjoy the communion bread and the wine that was left. As we celebrate Worldwide Communion Sunday, let us think about the many, way, the many different ways we do it and how important those ways are. Whether it's a common cup or individual cups, whether it's regular bread or leavened bread or wafers, I don't think God is offended by any of it. What matters is not the form, but the substance. What matters is not how we celebrate communion, but why. Why? We come to our Lord's table to remember Jesus, to remember his life, his death, to remember what happens to someone who breaks the rules for the sake of love, to remember that we are now the body of Christ in the world, broken yet whole. Of the same mind being in you that was in Christ Jesus, Paul writes. We are to have a mind of Christ who welcomed the other past, exalted the holy, who humbled himself and gave his life so that we might know how to live. We know how to be God's hands in the world. We, we do it countless times in different ways each week. It's harder to have Christ's mind and even more difficult to have Christ's heart. Yet this is our calling as Christians. To have the same mind, to have the same heart that was in Christ. To love the world even when it hurts. To love others even when they hate us. To love freedom even when it means limits. To love justice even when it isn't convenient. To love mercy even when it means extending it to someone whose beliefs we can't stand. We live in intensely divisive times, and yet today of all days we remember. We remember our connection with other Christians as we come to our table, and we remember all that unites us, all that we have in common with one another around the world. As we prepare to eat the bread broken, let us admit to our own brokenness. When we drink of the cup of blessing, let us offer blessings to others. When we receive from the table today, may we be changed by it. In concluding, Lou Nicholas writes, A father who taught his sons, a house divided cannot stand. The story is told about a father who catches his two sons quarrel. He calls them in and gives the oldest one a small stick and asks them to snap. The son did so with a rebellious smirk on his face. The father handed him two sticks together and asked him to snap them, which he did easily. Then it was three, then it was four, five, and six sticks, and by this time the boy was straining to snap the sticks. Finally the boy was straining to snap the sticks. Finally the seven sticks he had to admit defeat. Then the father cautioned his sons. A house divided cannot stand. You can be defeated one by one, but if you stand together, you have united strength. What matters is not the form, but the substance, and not how, but why. The substance of our faith is Christ. And we are called to be like him in mind and in heart.
In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're prayers of the people now followed by our communion hymn. Let us pray. Wonderful Creator God, through Scripture you assure us that although we may consider outward appearances, you do not. It is the heart that you consider. Through the Psalms you tell us that although we may prejudge others, we are wonderfully made, lovingly stitched in your tapestry of love. We are each of us wonderful, wonderful and beautiful. Help us, help us, help us to remember that. And to accept the responsibility when our failure to recognize your love in others causes harm. Help us to love ourselves as you love us. Lord, as we gather around this sacred meal, everywhere and in every place, bless all your people. As we eat this bread and drink this cup, linking arms around the world, pour your grace into us all. Grace us with your presence as we quietly and loudly pray to you. May we see in each other your light, your love, and you. May it not matter our differences, our names, our languages, our looks, and our way of doing things. May what matter today and every day be that we are one in you. And as we pray, many we call to mind our brothers and sisters who are unable to be with us today, whether in body or spirit. May you bring comfort to those who are grieving, lonely, heartbroken, ill, or broken in spirit. We pray for many situations in the world that are difficult, that are hurtful, that are causing separation and uprootedness of homes. We ask your spirit to be part of each one. We pray for Robert, for Mark, Nicole, Nancy, Angie, Val, Jean, Pat and Lori, Gary, Fran, Ralph M, Mark, the Huffman and Beatty families, and others who are going through a, a challenging time. May you strengthen those whose lives feel shattered. May you strengthen those whose lives are in crisis. May you say the healing word to those who need it. May you bring the human touch of love to those who have not been touched. May you love the unloved through us. Lord, may your light shine in those whose world is covered in darkness. May you use us to feed the hungry and clothe the ones who need clothes. Give a cup of water to those who are thirsty and shelter the homeless, visit the sick and those in prison. We ask your blessing upon the food bank gifts that have been brought today and upon our, our food bank, local food bank, as it continues to serve the surrounding community. May lives be awakened to you, Lord, to your love and to your kingdom, whose door is always open to all. In Christ we pray. Amen. <coughs> we come to prepare now to come to our Lord's table. Our hymn, communion hymn, as we gather at your table. 457 is the red, or on the screen. <laughs> Thank you. 
go to pour the wine, and there is always room you save for one more. And so we come from, from the streets and from the alleys, from the deserts and from the fields, we come. From the ravages of poverty and from the palaces of privilege, we come. Running, limping, carried, we come. We hold the seeds of healing, we dream of a new creation. We know the things that make for peace, we struggle to give them away. And yet to your table we come, hungry for your bread we come, thirsting for your wine we come, singing your song in every language, speaking your name in every tongue, in conflict and in communion, in discord and in desire we come. O God of wisdom we come, we come in thanksgiving, we come to the table where grace is always served. Brothers and sisters, the table is set for all. Around it, there are no divisions. As bread is not made from one grain, but from many, and as wine is made from many grapes, so too did Christ desire us all to belong to him. When our risen Lord sat at the table with his disciples, he took the bread and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were open, and they recognized him. Come and see that God is here among us. All are welcome at his table. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right, it is our calling and great joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, creator and sustainer of heaven and earth. From the elements of the earth, you created us and unique and distinct people, but all in your holy image. You breathed life into us and called us to love and serve you, and to live with you and one another in covenant and community. In the fullness of time, you came to us, born of our flesh, to reveal the full extent of your grace and love. Again and again, you welcome us and receive us with the open and loving arms of a loving parent. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with those from every time and place to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymns. Holy, 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 O Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy is your Son, Jesus. He continues still to reveal your kingdom to us in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the juice. We recall the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine that we and all who share this feast may be one with Christ and he with us. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours forever and ever. Amen. On the night of your betrayal, Lord Jesus, you took the bread, blessed it, and you broke it, and you gave it to your disciples and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You did the same with the cup after the supper, saying, This cup that is poured out is the new covenant in my blood. Bless this bread and this cup, the wheat and the grape, the farmer and the harvest, the seed and the sower, so that in the sharing of these elements in community, we may taste and see your goodness so that we might catch a glimpse of 
what it is to be in communion with you and with one another. Our table is ready. Prepare our, let us prepare our hearts to receive. Lord, bless this communion for your sake. In Christ we pray. Amen. The bread will be served to you in your seats, and once we have all received, we will commune together. This will be followed by the juice. Once we've all received the juice, we will commune together. Thank you. 
Let us join our voices and hearts together in the prayer of the We thank you, O God, for refreshing us at your holy table. May we always be reminded to see the world through Christ's eyes and to work for a time when we all have been there together at your table. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, we have received and now we have the privilege to share. Our offering will now be received. We begin a, a new month, a new week. The sun is shining as we go forth. May we join our voices in our hymn to take us forth, reminding us of those walls that need to come down. Though ancient walls, 691 in the red eye on the
Always abide with you forevermore.